What is happening, everybody? Adam Hopkins here with Cripplecast. I have Sean Craig in the studio today. How is everything? How's everything going, Sean? Everything's going good, man. Great, great. Before we get to Sean here, I want to do a little sponsorship shout out to everybody, uh, and then we will go ahead and go over the episode. So, our sponsors currently, I have Amber Manor Care Center out of Petersburg. It is a multi-unit nursing home that they have a rehab facility, and it's not a bad place to die. So, just kidding. It's not, but it's not. Uh, anyway, um, we also have Atlas Labs. Um, Chris Rowe has been doing some wild stuff with some 3D printing here in Petersburg. He's also kind of started a problem for me, and now I have a tiny sweatshop of 3D printers in my office. That, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to accomplish here, but I'm going to build something cool. Anyway, um, we have Made with Love and a few F bombs. That's Tara Zazetti. She makes all my front porch stuff. Super cute. Good stuff. Um, also, we have Custom Mechanical Construction out of Evansville, Indiana, a uh, commercial construction company that will take care of any commercial needs you have in construction. Also, our newest sponsor, we have uh, Brainstrap Genetics out of Moffat, Colorado. Matt Aldridge is doing some great things in some seed genetics out there, so check him out on the internet. And we also, uh, as normal, have the Elmer Book the Technology Center as a big sponsor here, letting me use their facility for the Cripplecast Studio. All right, now we will get into the episode with Sean Craig. Now, Sean, you look like an able-bodied man, which you are. You're a fully able-bodied man, but you have been plagued your entire life with a stutter, correct? Yes, I mean, I've, um, ever since I was born, uh, well, as far back as I could remember, I always did have a little bit of problem um, speaking, doing a lot of stammering, getting stuck, and let's see, went through, all through um, elementary school, went through uh, speech therapy, and even went as far as going through high school with that, and um, eventually, I just kind of started working on it myself. Okay, so let's 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 back up a second. So you, you know, obviously you didn't know when obviously you were a kid. How, how did your parents figure out that you had some sort of a speech impediment of some sort? And and what did they do then to, you know, did they do any extra stuff with you when you were a kid? Did you? Um, not that I remember. Uh, I mean, I took the speech um, tests and uh, was in speech class and we worked on, you know, I mean, I had problems with different letter sounds like everybody else, like R's yeah. and TH's and whatnot, and, but uh, the speech therapist, amazing lady, uh, she helped me, uh, we would work on reading and trying to say certain she would say things, and I would say things back, and try to read out loud. And so, I mean, it's been so long ago. I'll be honest; oh, yeah. I don't remember a whole. Oh, I don't remember cause everything because you're, you're an old man. I am an old man. You're an old man with two kids and a wife, and uh, it sounds exhausting. It is exhausting. I know. I had, to, I had to shed my <laughs> shed my skin here recently. I mean, that old meat sack I was carrying around for the last seven years. Whew! Now to get rid of her. Now free. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, but, so when you were a kid, yeah. like, well, how, okay, it was clear, you know, you were stuttering, except the people, well, did it, was it embarrassing? Did it, how did it affect you mentally as a child? You know what? Um, I you probably, were pretty resilient, I know that. I probably had a pretty um, different life growing up with it than maybe others um i had a very supportive community yeah um i mean my mom and dad were pretty well known throughout the community um uh, it just i never i made friends but nobody nobody ever made fun of me in school um never had the backlash of it i mean honestly i probably got more of that when I got, I mean, just people that didn't understand or if I got stuck on something, they would 
um, say some things or thought I was kidding with them and you know you kind of explain it to them and then they're like oh man I'm sorry I didn't know that but probably more of that as I got older not too much of that when I was younger though I mean everybody was pretty cool <laughs> well you know I know we went to high school together and I know I mean I I always imagined it being a struggle especially like trying to pick up girls trying to that kind of thing I, I wouldn't have known what to do in your situation yeah I mean it was it's when you, when I was at that point where it was very debilitating to where every other sentence was difficult to say, um, yeah, I mean, like, you'd think that it'd be, you know, difficult to go up some, you know, pretty girl and be like, hey, do you want, 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 want to go to the... Wrong with me, or well, right. I mean, I guess that'd be later, but even like the little dances and stuff, you know, yeah. would you want, you know, get into that spell? And, um, yeah, so I mean, there were definitely times where I did not take the initiative to um, ask maybe the person I wanted to ask, right. or maybe even ask at all, right? Now, but, um, because there's different, I mean, there's also kind of getting into. You know, there's different types of stuttering. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask about that. So, explain a little bit, like, a, you know, like different types of stuttering and how would it... Okay, just go, I'll let you go ahead and, and finish that. That looks good. So, one, it's still a very unknown subject. There's not a whole lot of um, rhyme or reason why. Um, there are different forms, some because you've had trauma, some you just, you know, um, PTSD or something along that lines, or you've, um, you know, some are just born a certain way. Uh, one doctor told me the best way he can explain it: you got two circuits crisscrossed in your head, and like one, once like the one that's supposed to be active is not, and the other isn't. But when you talk, it's vice versa. So. I see. Just and it's pretty strange, um, and when you sing, it's not that way at all. Yeah, I mean, some people have problems with if you um, have more of like the stammer, the the ba 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 ball went da 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 down the road or something like that. And then I always struggled. Mine most of the time was more of the block, like just getting it out to begin with. Like I would, I would want to say something. And I just couldn't. It was like a wall in front of me and getting that first word or syllable out. Once I got it out, I was good, but it was just it was just getting that first one um, going. And um, yeah, the crazy thing is when you uh, sing the, the auditorial, I don't know if it's, well, like when you sing and when you do things in unison with somebody. So like if I was standing up, doing the Pledge of Allegiance with everybody else, never had a problem. When I would sing, never would have a problem. I see. And it's only it's, when you're doing it by yourself. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, yeah. uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I've sounded, never, okay. no, I, I've never really dug too deep into why. I just, I always enjoyed singing, so I was like, yeah, hey. I, I was always amazed. Singing was my, uh, you know, that was my out. That was my therapy. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and do you still sing at all now? Like just or just for fun? Oh, yeah. 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 In the shower or you know, right. driving, you know, probably drive my wife nuts when we go on vacation. So. Well, she wouldn't have any other way. So. Um, now, you would, I remember when we were in school, you had a, an implant put in at one point uh, or, or some sort of device. That yeah, they um, tried out. Well, tell, tell me a little bit about that. So, uh, you can, I think there was, I think it was even on the Oprah show, but it was a, it was basically like a hearing aid um, that you would put in one of your ears and it would create a split second of like repetition. So, like, if I talked, it sounded like somebody was behind me talking kind of at the same time, but enough. Enough for it to feel like it was two people. And the idea of that was kind of like with the 
you know, standing up saying the Pledge of Allegiance, having somebody talk with you the same every single time. And um, that worked well when you could get sound out. So for those that would um, more or less stammer or be able to start the sound, you could kind of catch yourself and get yourself back on track. But it didn't really work a whole lot for me because, like I said, mine was more of a block, and I couldn't even get couldn't even get the information couldn't get the words out like I wanted to. So it, it didn't really work the way that we intended it to work. Right. But well, um, so I tried that out for a little bit, and then we we decided to just go back to you know working on you know my own way and. Now, whatever way you figure it out has worked, because I, I barely heard you stutter since you've been here today. And you don't hardly stutter anymore, it seems like. It would, if I haven't noticed the last few times I've hung out with you. I, um, I still get tripped up every once in a while. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm cured or by any means. I mean, like, it doesn't go away. Right, right. Um, I do think I've, I've learned in my body that, um, you know, anxiety definitely plays into that a little bit. Um, but I always put myself in situations where I had to talk. Like, yeah. I felt like I could be one of two people. I could be that little kid that just sat in the corner and didn't want to get out there in life, or I wanted to be a kid that wanted to do everything I wanted to do. So, yeah. um, so I did everything I did. I, you know, I was in the restaurant business. I had to talk to probably 300 people a day. Yeah. And then I got into retail, talked to even thousands of people a day. And I just, I, I I purposely put myself out there to, because I feel like if I ever stop doing that, if I don't, then I'd probably regress. Yeah. And I think that's, and that's why I wanted to have you on, because you had something you had to overcome and you didn't stop. I've always admired that about you. So, you know, yeah. Before this happened to me, God, I, it, I think I'd have just crawled in a fucking hole if I had, you know, a small, even a smaller disability. Like I think, if I would have had a speech impediment, I just would have crawled in a hole. I don't know. I don't know if I would have been confident enough to pull through it. I had to have something terribly devastating to me, like, oh, oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know if I could have dealt with anything less than what I got going on. Just, I, just, I would have been embarrassed, you know, just because I'm was, I don't know, an idiot. <laughs> well, I mean, I've had my moments. I've, yeah. uh, I've definitely had those times where uh, I was kind of caught up in, you know, one of my situations where I couldn't get anything out, and I definitely went home that day feeling like I failed. And um, But you know what? You get up and you, you try it again. Um, every day is different. I mean... You know, when you have a lot going on and, you know, like I said, you're starting something new, you're meeting somebody new, kind of the anxiety builds up. I, I do feel like sometimes I, I feel my body kind of tense up a little bit and I, I catch myself. Um, so I do try to try to slow down and just kind of be, yeah, be so open as long a as bit, you're but, calm and comfortable. Yeah. And you don't have much of an issue. Yeah. But don't ever say calm down to a little kid because that's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst thing ever. When I was, I mean, looking back, it it does help. But when you're a kid and you want to get everything you want to say out, and the adult tells you just to slow down, like you're not, you're just you're already your your emotions are going. You're you already are looking or feeling like you're an idiot for talking, and you want to get what you're saying out. And by then, just somebody saying slow down to you, like you're. That's not going to help you because you're not in that place. Really, what you need to do is is just you know step away from the situation, gather yourself, and then then try again. But um, you know, it's it's not like a light switch. You can't just flip it on and off. Right. You either do it or you don't. You either yeah. get caught up or you don't. So, um, but so um, let me let's take a step back real quick. Yeah. We'll, We'll talk about, okay, so you got, you know, you and I were good buddies in high school. Absolutely. You, yeah. So we, musicals, we had a lot of a lot of fun together. Oh, I remember going ghost hunting, do yep. all kinds of stupid shit. Uh, but, so you got graduated high school, and then you went on to college. Where'd you go to college at? I went to Indiana State. Okay. And what was 
that experience like compared to high school as far as navigating with your so-called disability at that point? Was it any different? Did you have to operate any different? Um, honestly, I, I gained a lot of confidence, I think, the end of my high school year. Um, that by the time I got to college, it was pretty easy just just making friends and um, everybody was kind of, you know, I, I lived in a, a dorm where everybody was freshmen, so everybody was not new and and even if I did get caught up, um, they just, I just felt like a lot of them just didn't care. Like they were like, yeah. oh, you know, come hang out with us and stuff. So I didn't um, have a whole lot of difficulty with that. Um, you know, when I first started working in the restaurant business, that I mean, you, you know, you get up there and uh, get trying to get the drink order like a couple of the syllables or um, words that, or sorry, a couple of the letters that I have a hard time would get stuck on would be H's. So the word hello was like the the enemy of like my nemesis my whole life, yeah. like. You know, picking up a phone, saying hello, calling somebody, saying hello. You go to a table, like hello, saying, what's up? You know, you do. You yeah, maybe maybe not what's up, but um, like when you, if you're watching old cartoons of Looney Tunes and you see Porky Pig getting yeah. caught up, and then he completely changes his word, that does happen, and you kind of you kind of in your brain already know what you're going to switch it to when you start feeling. You yeah, get stuck on that word. Getting stuck, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so going to a table and just trying to say hello, how are you? That to get started. Sometimes that's See, that would, cold. That would. But once you got there, or and I was always open with it. Like I was, if I got caught up, I just said, "Hey, you know, when I got done or I took a breath, I was like, listen, sorry, have a little bit of stutter, just bear with me here.'" And then everybody was cool, and yeah. we went through. So, um, always keeping open with it because. When I was younger, I felt like I was the only kid in the world that did it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know other kids did, but it's not common enough where I felt like other kids did. Like, I right. felt all alone. And right, and that's, that's a, that has to be terrible. That would be kind of devastating to you. Just at seclusion. a certain point, you know, just knowing you're not the same as everybody else, and that has to be in itself tough, because I don't know... I always felt like I was the same as everybody else, but I, I, and if I would have had a stutter or something, I don't know how it would have felt. Because I grew up and I, I was, I, I feel like 34 years, I, I didn't have a single thing wrong with me in comparison. And uh, now I don't know, I feel a lot different than I used to. And I wish, uh, a lot of times I hadn't put myself in the shoes of somebody else previous to this. Maybe I would have been such an asshole, but I, I don't know. But. Yeah, well, I sit here. I listen to other people tell me their story. I'm like, God damn, you were a <laughs> so. I mean, it was what it was. It, uh, I, you know, like I said, I could be, I could have been, you know, one of two people, and I just decide, you know, pick the one that was more active, and, yeah. um, and I was never. I, I was really embarrassed by it when I was younger, but as I got older, I'm just like, well, listen, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it. I mean, even, um, you know, get caught up, just say, hey, I got this. Yeah. You know, give me a second, I'll deal with it. So, right. um, you know, I mean, just kind of... I mean, you rolled with it, man. Yeah, you just kind of keep moving and... You rolled with it, you made the best of your situation, and that's what... Is admirable, and that's what I try to do. Is yeah, I've got a shit situation here, but I've got to keep, you know, I got to keep rolling. I ain't got an option, and I wished I had had that mindset previous to you know my accident. But it sometimes you know takes something like this to change your attitude about everything. So you know, you I, that's why I admire you. Grew up with a disability. I think it might. I don't know if it's easier growing up with a disability than it is getting one later. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, I think you did a hell of a job. I mean, now you've got a wonderful family. You've, so since that. since college, you've uh, you know you went into retail after 
the restaurant business, right? Yep, yeah. I uh, worked um, worked in retail for about nine years, and um, during that time, had an opportunity to open uh, help open a new store down in Paducah, and that's where I met my wife. And All right, had a yeah. couple kids, and we decided to move home and been back since. But, oh. uh, yeah, civilization as I call it, Petersburg, Indiana. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely place. Tell you what, you always talk about trying to get out of it, and then you go out and you live in other places, and you realize, you know what, it's not a bad place. It's not a bad place. It's, it's got a great this place. This is one of the best communities that you could find. If I mean, and some some would say, oh, it's it's you know, small, closed-minded. It's not really that closed-minded. It's People want to believe it is. It's really not anymore. Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's for sure. But uh, it's I could I wouldn't want to live anywhere else because everything after my accident, this community is, stands behind the people that that uh, care about. You know, if you care about this community, they'll care about you. They will. So they will. that's a that's a it's a good place. And it feels like home. So y'all want a good place to live. People are great. <laughs> So anyway, other than you know, after retail, you got into doing um, doing some other things. So now I work at a uh, you know a pretty public job stuff. I don't I won't exactly say where you work at, but you know anybody that knows you knows where you work. But um, you know, for your job's sake, I will uh, will leave that part out. But you know, he has a job in the public eye now. So um, and back to what we were saying, you know, it, it, you you haven't. You're more comfortable now than I've seen you ever in your life. So, like I said, you haven't had a stutter one bit since you've been here that I've seen. And uh, I think that's a testament to how hard you've worked on it, you know? I definitely agree with the work. I mean, it definitely did not come just because I woke up and all of a sudden it was gone. It's It was a lot of um, practice and patience and putting myself in situations where I had to talk and knowing how to feel before I start talking. I mean, you know, if I do get a little, you know, meeting a new person or starting a new job or just doing something, you know, you, you take those deep breaths, you get your mind right, and then you get back into it. Um, I never, never really had a problem, you know, other than death, public speaking is the number two fear in the world and um, never had a problem with that just because I mean you know, it's part of life you, you, you gotta talk to people you have to get yeah. there so I just took it I mean I might have fell on my face and it was the worst speech anybody could have ever given but you know what I finished it I got back to my I got back to my desk and life moved on weren't you, know? you valedictorian or salutatorian that was valedictorian that's what I thought yeah, yeah I should have mentioned that earlier well, you're, you're so good. yeah that's good that's uh, yeah, I remember that that's wild yeah so. well I, I tell you what that kind of plays into into that stuttering um, when I was younger I you know I knew I was a little different than everybody else and it was a little harder maybe sometimes making friends sometimes and um, I just I wanted to show people that I was just as good if not better than anybody else so um, I chose so the way I chose it was through academics and that was why I tried so hard in school I studied so hard in school just just to show that I you know even though I may stutter I might have a problem speaking to you I'm still just as smart as you Absolutely. and still just as able as you and mm -hmm. you know so that was I, I do gotta say that was probably one of the big reasons why like academically I ended up where I ended hard, up yeah. because I just wanted to prove something to everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm at an age where I just need to prove something myself. There you go. You know, you don't really care what yeah. other people think mm -hmm. anymore and um, I think that also probably has helped. Yeah. Too. Getting older and you know, getting more comfortable, you know, you got a wife, you got kids, you none of the other crap matters anymore. That's all that matters is what they think of you and what you think of yourself. Absolutely. So, and that's that's really all that should matter ever. What you think of yourself and what your family thinks of you, because that's in the long run that's all that's ever going to be there. So, and that's hard. For, I mean, that's hard for a kid. That's hard because I mean, 
in a kid's eyes, and even when you're in high school or college, I mean, really, friends is is the biggest thing that you're you know you just want to feel accepted by feel accepted by friends and peers and you know people that you go hang out with and eventually you start learning that there's a lot more to life than just going out every night on a Friday night and being stupid so yeah that's for sure you know but yeah it's sometimes still fun to go out and be stupid on a Friday night but anyway well um if you could tell anybody in your situation that's going through this now anything what would it be oh gosh Acceptance. Acceptance. Accept that maybe it's not going to go away. Like, I think I think that was one of the biggest things that I did was accepting that um, this isn't going to go away. I am who I am, and that's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to you know you just got to learn how to deal with it in your best way. Um, don't give up and to do what I did and just put yourself out there because the more you know the more you fail that just means the more successful you'll be later at it because um, at time to time you'll learn what works and you'll learn what doesn't work and and it is I mean like maybe not looking at them but inside their head they do see or they're thinking about Okay, this is going to cause me to do that. That's going to cause me to do this. Should I do that? No. Should I use this word? No. Like, there's a lot of internally stuff going on inside. So, um, but the more you do that, then the more you can work through some of your problems. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my two cents. All right. So. Well, you know, I'm, is there anything else? Like, what do you what do you got planned for the future? Or anything? Any any big plans in your in your life other than just being dad? And, at the moment, no. I'm just enjoying being a dad. I'm in a situation where I'm starting to be able to coach my kid. I used to, be the, used to be the dad to get their kid at practice like five, ten minutes late just because that was how you know my life was at the time. And now I'm the dad that can go out and actually coach his kids. And I just want to do, you know, do that as much as I can. I mean, um, you know, eventually my knowledge of the sport will surpass them See, growing up, so they'll need somebody I like, to... I like the type of coach you are, yeah. uh, the way I understand it from uh, what I've heard is you're the, everybody let's go out and have a good time coach, and uh, as opposed to some of them that are getting down on kids and are making mistakes and stuff, they're kids. Let them be kids. They are. At, at this age. They are. I, mean, I have a big problem with, uh, and I know that it's going to be an issue for me with my child because uh, everybody besides me in my family and even her side of the family, are very competitive. I've just never been that way. And so I don't care if my kid doesn't score a touchdown or a, a goal, as long as she had a good time. And But I don't want somebody yelling at my kid for, yeah. you know, because they make a mistake on the field. Don't make my kid cry. Don't, you know, make a mistake, let's talk to him about it. But, you know, but I can't stand when people sit there and yell at kids from the side. Hey, hey. Yeah. But that's me. But that's me. So. Yeah, I mean, there's de there's definitely a way, a better way to address, you know, mistakes yeah. than than to, you know, than to berate them. Um, I've never been the type of guy that if you're gonna yell at me, I'm just, gonna, just forget it, man. I'll lay down on you. Yeah, I mean, and kids, you know, kids are like adults; they shut down, and you know, that's not going to get through. Um, but no, it's been fun. I mean, it's also that you know. Coach my boys have been a blast. Coach of the other kids have been a blast. It's just, it's just nice meeting people. And yeah, um, so I'm gonna do that for a while. And um, you know, as far as the future, I'm, I'm Coach Shanzi. So oh, yeah. yeah, I like that. But as far as anything else, no, I'm just, you know, oh, we're just living life, man. Good, good. Well, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of the man you've become. It. And I'm glad you came on here. I know that you know. Glad originally, you invited me. I mean, yeah. Well, well originally just, you don't think about, you know, I was saying you don't think about. Um, you maybe didn't think about stutter being a disability, but it truly is. It know? is, and uh, and there's I knew there was people out there that needed to hear your story, and you know people from this community, people from other communities need to hear that there's a there is a disability within everyone, but it's how you deal with it that makes it a disability really, and uh, is is it an ability or a disability, and you seem to overcome it 
and it's used it for you. And as you, you know, as you get older, you find out, you know, you're not the only one. There are, no. I've actually, you know, now I know quite a few people that that have had it throughout my life. I've bumped into or met yeah. or friends or something or, um, but so so you're not alone in it. Yeah. You know, there there are a lot of people. There are uh, the and you may one day have a kid that may have one. Absolutely. And, and, and somebody can refer back, hey, you know what I heard? I heard a, a, a podcast, Sean Chris, he had one. Or heard Adam, Adam had a guy with a stutter on there, you know? So, you know, that's the kind of thing. I, I want people to be able to refer back to something like this and think, oh, maybe I can draw something from that later. I don't know. Um, so, like, yeah, if somebody grew up with only with, with an extra toe or something, I want to hear how that affected your life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, we we don't we don't have uh, people like that on. That's weird. I'm kidding. Um, but Sean, I want to say thank you for joining me on thank this you. podcast, and uh, uh, you're a great friend. I uh, want to have you back again as a as a a panelist on certain things. I'm going to do some things in the future here where. I want to have a bunch of different cripples of all different kinds, and I want to have people asking questions too. It's like kind of like a a panel. Yeah, and I'll just, figure it out one of these days. Yeah, just ask me. I'll be right here for it. All right, buddy. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, Cripplecast Nation, thank you very much for joining me on Cripplecast again, 6 p.m. every Saturday. Thanks a lot, guys.